Not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn till you can say I am what I am. Good afternoon and welcome to Dublin City FM. You're listening to LGBTQ Life with myself, Mix Fitzgerald, and today we have a very special program for you because the subject is boxing. Not something we uh, get to hear about a lot on this air show, but we are delighted to uh, in, uh, to have as our guests in the studio some of the uh, the trainers from out there in the Esker Boxing Club. And I'm going to start off on my right, Ed Griffin. Ed, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Mick. And we also have uh, Mick Kelly as well. Mick, welcome to the show as well. Thanks, Mick. And he's joined by the very, the very ruggedly handsome Pascal Joyce as well. So, Pascal... <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Not only welcome to uh, Dublin City, uh, but also welcome to East Wall. Guys, I'm going to start at the very beginning because uh, you got to forgive. Uh, I'll be showing my age here in this one, and that is Esker. Where is Esker? Because Esker didn't exist when I was a, uh, a kid running around. So uh, I might ask yourself, uh, uh, Pascal, where's Esker? It's actually in Lucan. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very prominent there. Yeah. As you come into Lucan, it's probably the um, it's one of the biggest parts of the scheme of Lucan there mm -hmm. at the moment. That's so we have it in there. Uh, is it a new suburb in that sense of the word? Because you know, like Tala, a lot of those were just very sleepy on the way to the country sort of places. Oh no, no, Esker's oh God, Esker. I'm living up there for what the best part of forty years. So. You know, it was just about coming in at that time. You must have been a child when you moved there, Pascal. But Ed, box Esker Boxing Club. What's the uh, what's the background to that? How long uh, might that have been going? Um, well, we we set up about uh, six years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've all came from a uh, different Mick Mick Box out of Phoenix there in town. Uh, passed the box out of the army and I boxed out of Lucan Boxing Club. So we sort of felt the need for a club out there that focused uh, mainly on boxing. Um, and it's a huge population, like Lucan's a population of 56,000 and um, there's a dire lack of facilities out there. So we just said we'd set one up and within a few months we were packed over and we'll continue to be packed over ever since, you know. Mm -hmm. Now I have to admit, guys. I did some boxing when I was about eight or nine, and I won my first fight. And then I got the be Jesus beaten out of me in my second fight, and I thought I'll probably take up football. <laughs> do you have problems? Uh, and I'll go to yourself on this one, Pascal. Do a certain type of uh, kid gravitate towards boxing, or do, is it easy to attract kids to boxing these days? I. <sighs> It's a hard question you know, to, to gravitate towards. You know, we have kids there, they come in and they know nothing about boxing, obviously, mm. which is, make us great with the kids. He brings them from the, the, the junior ages up. Mm. I give Nick a hand on that. And then we get into the senior part of it. You can almost, after one or two weeks, tell who the kids are going to be, who, what, what their style is going to be, if they're mm. able to manage you know, what they're doing. And you know, we have some great little chiselers there, really and truly from... I think the age is eight, nine, is it? Younger, Even younger, six. six. Yeah. And you can see it in them. They're willing to do and emulate. Like they're, 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 they're heroes going back to Tyson Clay, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the new boxers on the scene now, as I would call them, you know, um, Mary with. Mayweather and people like that, and these kids are really they're just super. I, I love doing it. Mick and I, well, and Ed, we are we all we get in there, and it's just it's an enjoyable night of training for us all. And yeah. That's how I look at it. Yeah, make yourself. I mean, uh, when I was uh, younger, uh, boxing was much more prominent. You got bo you usually got amateur boxing on RTE on a Saturday night. You had less. Uh, if you like martial sports to compete against, you didn't have the, you know, the the Oriental ones. You didn't have your kung fu's. You didn't have your certainly your mixed martial arts. H has boxing suffered in terms of uh, that competition? Oh yeah, it probably has, but it's still very popular. Mm -hmm. it's still very very popular. Yeah. Back in the day, um, we had lots of what I would call amateur boxers that were very well known, very, uh, you know, people like Jim McCourt who won uh, Olympic medals, people like Mick Dowling in their, in their day. Is there the same, um, shall we say, uh, reverence for 
local boxers that there would have been in um, the I'd say w within the boxing community itself, there is reference yeah. for the likes of Paddy Barnes and uh, Michael Conlon and Katie yeah. Taylor and all that. Mm -hmm. like, there's reference within the boxing community and to a certain extent outside of it for them boxers. But what I found was, well, just coming from a person point of view, when the likes of the satellite companies took over professional boxing, mm -hmm. it took it out and fights won in America, it took it out of the the natural uh, demographic where we used to get kids into the sport. Mm -hmm. like I remember watching Barry McGuigan and Pedroza, it was on an ITV at half seven at night, and I could stay up with my dad and watch with my brother. Mm -hmm. Now it's on a half four in the morning, you have to pay, f like I think the Mayweather McGregor fight, it'll be 100 euros to pay in. Like, mm -hmm. like you know, unless you're really into the bo into boxing on a pro level, mm. um, you don't follow. On the amateur level, it's still big within the, the boxing community and mm. to a certain extent outside it. But only when they're successful are they, is the court does the media coverage come really. Yeah, yeah. And back in those days, there used to be it used to be fairly well defined as to who was the champion at each different weight. But there seems to be uh, seems to be alphabet soup now, doesn't it? You see, it's all you see the on the professional boxing. It's all sanctioning fees, so like we'll yeah. say WBC, WBA, they all get a certain sanctioning fee to host the world title, where it's not really, you know, like, whereas... Has it become like, more a business than a sport? Well, it's, everything has. Yeah. You know, in, in every walk of life, in every sport, um, it's become, like, it's, uh, everything's monetized to a greater degree than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we were boxing, it was literally you get in your box, like, and that's sort of the emphasis we try and put on it when we have kids in the club, um, just to promote the sport, forget about all the the rubbish and all the stuff that goes on around it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the kids are just getting into the ring to fight. Yeah, Pascal, I'm going to come back to yourself. I mean, in, in our day, we were privileged. I mean, I make no bones about it. The greatest athlete I ever saw in any sport was Muhammad Ali. Oh, well, he was just unbelievable. And then he also had a personality to yeah. go with it. Yeah. I mean, uh, our, our kids today, are they are they denied to that degree, you know, some of the greats that we saw? I mean, um, uh, I, I honestly can't think of anybody over the last 20 years that, it, you know, it, it remotely has that impact. Well, with television now, they're not denied the fact that these were the greatest heroes I I in the past. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they get a lot of that. And there's a lot of videos out on them too. And I noticed that mm -hmm. a lot of our kids in the box, and they talk about these guys as if they knew them at times. You okay. know? And I'd be saying, where's this coming from? It is actually coming from the, the box sets that they get and so far. And, of, of course, we, among uh, as trainers, talk about the old boxes and that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had the great, great privilege of escorting Muhammad Ali. In um in Crow Park during the time of the um the uh, the Special Olympics, which the Special Olympics, the Special Olympics, uh, couldn't okay. think of that. the great now, I mean, when they asked me to do that in the tunnel coming out of it, I nearly died because there's my hero sitting in front of me, uh, and I'm escorting him, and I'm telling you, to this day, I still shake a piece when I think of it. Yeah, but the kids now getting back to the kids as well. They that's the way they are now. They this is where they learn from. Yeah, and what about yourself, Mick? I mean, when uh, just sticking with Ali, uh, I always say it was one of the great tragedies because I mean the man was just phenomenal. Now they tell the story that he got premature Parkinson's. I just have my doubts because if you see some of those fights that he had, particularly against Fraser and particularly uh, against Ken Norton. Do you get parents saying, oh, no, 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 I don't want my kids ending up like, you know, if, if it can happen to somebody that good, um, uh, is that a disincentive for it? Look, look, pro boxing and amateur boxing is completely different. Yeah. Amateur boxing is very, very safe. Yeah. It's probably one of the most safest sports out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at rugby, the kids are getting knocked around, they get yeah. concussion and things like that. It very seldom happens in amateur boxing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a safe sport. They yeah. use the bigger gloves, they use the head guard gum shields, there's a referees on top of watching them, the kids getting hurt, they get stopped. Mm -hmm. They're not getting hurt. Okay. Me, me, me and there's a lot of skill involved in boxing now. Okay. It's not about just knocking somebody out. Uh, but I actually work for the, the IABA, Mick coaches with me there as well, with the, the, the start box, Dublin City. It's, mm -hmm. And we go in there, we have five other guys there coaching with us, and we go into primary schools around the city, and literally everything is literally just non-contact. Okay. And it's it's basically just trying to get like what we what we try and stress on that is you're trying to get kids involved in a sport that wouldn't be their natural sport. Like let me say, I got involved in boxing because of my father, and I'm sure the lads did as well. Like if you have a kid, and just on the, the, the in relating to the topic we're, we're we're sort of here for today as well. Mm -hmm. Like if any kid wants to come into a club, 
you, you, you're trying to reach out and say, look, come here, try every sport. You're going to stick at one, maybe, yeah. but try them all. Yeah. So essentially, like, amateur boxing is a completely different world to professional boxing, yeah. you know. Yeah. What we're, uh, why we're particularly interested in talking to you guys is that you're launching now, at least you're supporting a campaign called Straight Out, and that is, is to encourage people who are LGBT, which could be uh, gay, bisexual, transgender, whatever, to take up boxing. How did that come about? Well, the three of us were actually um, in the club there at the end of last season, which would have been June. And we were sort of just having a chat, just a general chat about like, um, just like, we were actually speaking about like, Leo Radcar obviously just got elected as the, the Taoiseach of Ireland. We were saying, that, you know, it's actually amazing, like, there's no one at, at a high level, speak to yourself as well, Mick, about, there's no one at a high level in sport really out in soccer or anything like that like but, but the law of averages there has to be like mm -hmm. a, a lot of gay, gay people involved in professional sport mm -hmm. now there most of these are guys are are gay and, and women as well plenty of money so even if they did come out they're insulated to a certain degree because they can stay in a big match and stuff like that mm -hmm. like how hard is it for a kid that uh, has difficulty with their sexuality um trying to come into a normal uh, mm -hmm. sports team and then they don't have to. They don't have to cocoon. They can go back into it. So they have to go back into school the next day or something like that. So we sort of said it's important to sort of put the word out on our behalf that we're open to all kids. And like, mm -hmm. I, we don't give a crap what colour a kid is, what uh, ethnic diver what ethnic background or what sexuality they're. Mm -hmm. If they come in and they want a box, we want them in the club. Yeah. You know, yeah, one of the things, and it's interesting because uh, when I was looking it up, uh, doing a bit of research this morning, and uh, we've got a few here. Uh, if I go through Wikipedia, which of course is the source of all knowledge, um, if I look through just under the category of LGBT boxers, almost half of them are female, which is rather interesting. You know, uh, we've got Nicola Adams, uh, who uh, was a double gold yeah. medalist. We have uh, uh, we have a woman called Anne Wolfe. We have another woman called Marlon Esparza. Uh, and it's interesting. It seems to me that women are in this area breaking down the barriers. Um, is that what you're finding, or uh, uh, well, we, well, or is it balanced out? No, well, I've come here as come here just in society. Like I suppose mm. society, like up to this point or up to the last twenty years, it's just been like sort of um, macho sort of um, <laughs> that type of society. Mm -hmm. Like whereas regards women have just been always easier with that type of stuff. I find anyway where mm -hmm. it's. They're, they're more supportive of if, if their friend came out as gay or something mm -hmm. like that. They're a lot more supportive. Lads, it's just, it's it's literally coming from the school ground. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, if, if a kid comes out, the first thing, like Floyd Mayweather said to McGregor last week, I don't know, can, can I say it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like he's a, a faggot and stuff like that. And yeah. I started going, like every kid in the country is watching that. It's the biggest yeah. fight in history. And he started coming straight with that word. Like, what, a, what an idiot I think to say. <laughs> you know, so the reason we, we like, I'm sure there's a lot more gay boxers out there mm. and uh, uh, lesbian boxers and stuff like that out there than because just and then people just are just nervous about coming out about how their peers are going to view them, you know. Yeah. Now, we run a tournament every October, the Escarol Female. We have 400 women and girls from all over the world visiting Lucan for the Escarol Female Box Cup in 2017. I'm sure a good percentage of them are, are, are young gay girls or mm. young lesbian girls. And it, but it, the, the whole thing about it is couldn't give a crap yeah. you know what I mean they're there to box yeah well it's always an interesting one with women you know if women are uh, if women are too good at sport they have to be gay <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so, that's uh, right yeah but but I want to come back to yourself uh, Pascal as the uh, as the, the experienced player here as we say right. one of the, although it only um was announced in the last few years when he died uh, probably the most famous gay boxer of all time that I can remember was Emil Griffith uh, now, uh, Emmett was a world champion uh, and, and a very, very good one. And he was also involved uh, in a very controversial fight with a guy called Benny Perrette, who by all accounts uh, made some very derogatory remarks. And as a result, uh, he got seriously beaten up and died in a, in a bout. Now, uh, when you look at that particular story, it's an interesting one because this was a guy, you know, was one of the finest in his division of all time, and yet, uh, it was. I think he was retired forty years before any of that came out. Is that 
that's the type of barrier you're trying to break down. In that's that, that's that exactly what we're trying to break down yeah. and bring it to the forefront with these guys. Again, what Ed said there, we don't care whether they're gay or straight or anything. It doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. A person is a person, flesh and blood, in the story. What they do in their own time is their mm -hmm. business there. I have some great, great gay friends, and I mean it, yeah. some great friends. And I've only had a couple of people who were speaking about this on the way in, yeah. and querying already about Pascal, can we get into this? Of course you can. Yeah. So when we get the dates of what we're doing, and we're up and going with this club, please God, this is what we're looking for, uh -huh. is to get this club going. This is when we'll, we'll start taking in these guys and train. They want to be boxers, we're there to teach them. And I'm, we're all in agreement with that. We'll yeah. always be in agreement with that. Yeah. Coming back to yourself, Mick, uh, is one of the difficulties, and the, uh, this is uh, skirting around what we've been talking about, that particularly if you're a young gay guy uh, and you want to take up boxing, you've got very few role models, uh, you know, in a way that, you know, most people who, you know, who are not gay, you know, they assume that most of the English footballers that they look at are, uh, you know, are, it, it probably doesn't even become an issue in that sense of the word. Uh, is that one of the difficulties, is that we need to have more role models for people? Of course we do. Yeah. We do. We really do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because we have one, and that's a guy called Orlando Cruz. Um, perhaps we need a few more Orlandos in that sense of the word. And Without a doubt, yeah. yeah. Of course we do. Yeah. So coming back then, uh, um, Ed, what, we were talking about snooker uh, beforehand, and I was said uh, the, the people I'm talking to about snooker, I'm saying, you know, would you, uh, you know, yeah, w w w would you uh, allow, say, trans people to be in the uh, in the women's snooker? And he was saying, no problem. Probably a bit difficult in the boxing. Or uh, how do you feel about that? I don't know. It just come here. It's just <laughs> such. It's, no, but uh, it's it's. I come here. Anyone's welcome to box in their club. It's mm. just at at the end of the day, everyone that, like you're standing in there and you're punching people and all that. And if you're fit to box, mm. you're fit to box. Like it's such. It's I suppose it's. See, Ireland, Ireland hasn't really faced up to issues like this really as such. Mm. Mm. So like even a lot of the organisations like we're in the IBA. You have the FEI, which is a huge organisation, has done nothing along these lines. Yeah. Um, the IRFU have done nothing. The GA, the biggest sport in the country, yeah. have done done nothing to address this. Like so, all these issues, all the issues, like even tra uh, trans people and all that, like th th there should be no barriers to anyone getting involved in sport. But mm -hmm. th there should be there should be a welcome there for people to get involved. Like at the end of the day, you're trying to get kids involved and people involved in sport, and it doesn't really matter. What, what orientation you are if you want to be involved but there, it shouldn't be oh my god I'm going to have to come in there what, yeah. are, going to, people, what are people going to think of me yeah. that, that should be the last thing on your mind yeah. Yeah. do you know what I mean if you're going in there and you're if you're prepared to get fit <coughs> and you're prepared to get active in the sport like the, the tagline we have for the outstrike campaign is participation and orientation yeah. so the whole thing is to get involved like, you know that type of way like, like there was issues there I think was it Sotomayor the South African runner um, yeah. she uh, the, she was transgender. I'm not 100. percent She was intersex. Really. Intersex. Yeah. yeah there was yeah. issues. There. But there was issues. There was issues. There was issues with the Olympic, yeah. the, the International Olympic Council on them, and they had the highest sport and yeah. amateur sport and organization in the world, and they didn't know what to do. Yeah. So obviously, the, people need to sit down and say, how are we going to welcome people from all strands of society in, uh, sexual, ethnic, all strands of society. Pe People just haven't looked into it enough and said that. So basically, our, our campaign is to get the word out, get people talking about it. And already we have a soccer team, Griffin Celtic from Lucan, that have come on board. They post it on Facebook on Sunday night, and the Herald Striker want to do an article on it because soccer, soccer is a massive thing where people, and in a way, it's an easier sport. A, a team sport is an easier sport for someone to come out as gay because in a lot of the cases, they will have support of their teammates. Boxing, you're on your own. Yeah. You know, well, that's an again, uh, Pascal. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Because it strikes me that this is something that should be done from the top down. That uh, I mean, you guys are uh, to be commended because you're an individual club that t you, basically you're taking a, a global idea and pushing it. Uh, it, it strikes me that the boxing uh, uh, authorities should be the one that should be getting right behind this and then putting it out to everybody, uh, just about every club. Uh, just, we're, we're, just, sorry, sorry Pat, just to cut you off, I actually work for the IBA and, uh, and uh, Geraldine McTavish is the club development officer and they are 100% the 
they're going to come on board as the first, hopefully the first no national government body okay. to get involved. So like, that's, sorry for coming yeah. across, you no, know. I was going to say, that, like, it, it's taken a nobody's yeah. to let the upper echelon know about what's happening there, yeah. to get them involved. And once they wake up, see what's happening there, I'm sure they'll come on board with us and, and it'll be a different thing then. I really and truly believe that it's going to change. We're going to, well, hopefully we're going to change this up. Yeah. But we need the people upstairs to come down to our level and say, look, we're going to give you a dig out on this. That's how I feel about it. So at the moment, are you guys totally reliant on your own funding to... Uh, oh to God, uh, yes. To, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, we, we, we're not... Well, well, I think we've got some... Uh, uh, Funding at the moment. Well, we get for, we get funding for the the boxing club as yeah. not as regards. Yeah. We get funding for, as regards. We look for funding for the the, the female cup. But yeah. this campaign, we just said we 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 run with ourselves, and we'll hope the likes of Sport Ireland, the IBA, mm -hmm. the FEI, and all should get it up and running. But let's ha let's just see what happens now. You know, we've put the word out. Yeah. We sent the emails out. So yeah. hopefully, we'll problem like ourselves here, Mick, today, and we get the word out. Yeah. Mick, how do you feel uh, the media are uh, helping out on this? Because, I mean, uh, I, 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 simply because I like to do di uh, things that nobody else is doing. I've covered different female sports, and I'm, most of the time uh, you go along and the games are empty. You know, well, I, I, even, the, uh, even the soccer team. But yet I watched the, uh, the women's cricket yesterday uh, uh, because England were in the England final. The yeah, season. they were tw nearly thirty thousand at it. Now, okay, cricket's more. Uh, but how important is getting media behind you to get that sort of coverage, to get that sort of exposure? Oh, it's very important. Yeah, you yeah. need you need it. Without the media, sure, you've no. Know, Facebook is a big thing. Oh. Social, Social media, media is uh, like that. You need yeah. to get it out there. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, so it, it, well, we'll because be all it, over Facebook very soon. Ah, we're that's trying what we're, we're trying to get our building. Yeah. Promote yeah, as well, yeah. you know. Well, this is what one of the things I find ironic in the sense that uh, we love to talk now about how Ireland is an Ireland of equals and so on and so forth. But the one area of of serious inequality is sport. I mean, uh, because by right, or half the sport on RTA should be female sport or it should be an alternative. But what is it? It's about ninety percent male, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You see, the the the, the, the what the problem is, um, the way we'd say is like sport is how, like the 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 levels of immigration into this country, and the levels of people, uh, yeah. gay young gay people and stuff like that. Like sport is how people are integrated. Yeah. Like people around Lucan, where we're from, and all that. There's every color, every creed on soccer teams in yeah. our club, and that's how when 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 you're thirty years old and you're sitting in the pub and you've ever never interacted with a gay person or a black person or a person from a different ethnic background. You've, your, your preconceptions with that person are already ingrained in you. If you mm. get kids involved in sport, you don't give a crap yeah. what colour someone is or what sexuality you are. They just yeah. to play sport. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's essentially mm. what Air Campaign is all about, yeah. the Eight Straight Campaign. They usually know? remember who's good and who's not, isn't here's it? Here's my pal I used to box with years yeah. ago. Now here's, my, here's this gay fellow I used to box with years yeah. ago. Yeah. Here's my pal I used to box with. Yeah, yeah. Ah, look, I mean, we know we're kids, you know. Where if somebody was good at sport, you wanted them on your team. You know, that was basically yeah. it. So, guys, tell us, be we're we're about to uh, run out of time, but you've got a fundraiser, or at least you're hoping to uh, to raise some funds to not only build a new clubhouse, but also to get some of your campaigns going. Tell us about that, uh, Ed. Um, well, we've we we secured a site of South Dublin County Council recently after a, a six-year campaign. Of harassing people and politicians and oh. stuff like that, so and getting a lot of support from the likes of Gay Bourne, Brian Driscoll, loads of people supporting it. So we're trying to fundraise for the building now at the moment. So mm -hmm. th this week, the end of sorry, next week we're kicking off the fundraising campaign. We're probably going to do a few gigs, pass involved in the music industry, and we probably end up doing a wax at all. Oh, well, <laughs> so yeah. we get all our bits shaved off and stuff like that. I hope yeah. you raise a few. <laughs> You've already so, started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Some I'm of away. us have left to get, less to get shaved off than the rest. <laughs> yeah. others, sorry. But um, so we're trying to fundraise at the moment. So we'll have all our account details up on our website and our Facebook page, Esker Boston Club. We've we've nearly five thousand followers on that and. You know, if anyone wants to come on board, fundraise and or donate stuff, we greatly appreciate it. You know. Yeah. So how can they do that? Uh, well, you can contact, go onto our Facebook or our, our website, escarboxingclub.com, mm -hmm. and contact the club cl coach directly. There's Eileen Tui, uh, Brian Brady's our president, um, Eileen's our uh, treasurer and one of the, our female coach. And any of us or any one member out of the club and say, look, I'd like to donate something, or I'd like to come on board fundraising, mm -hmm. and that's as easy as it is. Like we'll have the bank account details up on the oak. But the, the main focus coming here today was really to to 
big a shout out for out outstrike campaign and yeah. you know and, that was oh, and uh, last but by no means least um uh, if i could ask both pascal and mick over there people listening to this if they think that's a good idea maybe that's something i'd like to be involved in how could they uh how could they get in touch with you guys as i said just on facebook give us a ring we have a website up as well so we just Pick up the phone, will you? Yeah. And we're not just asking people at this precise moment in time. We're pleading with them, please come on board with us. Give us a dig okay. up, please. It's not that hard to do. Yeah. Look up the website, look up the Facebook, and try and get involved. It's a great thing for kids. Uh -huh. Don't miss the opportunity. Look. You're, uh, you're pioneers, that's all I can say. Uh, we wish you all the very best, and keep us uh, keep us posted of any of the campaigns you've got, and we'll be very happy to uh, to share them with listeners here. In the meantime, I just want to thank Mick and Pascal and Ed uh, from Esker Boxing Club. Straight out campaign, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the magic word. I'll make fits. Uh, I want to thank Sam for doing such a fabulous job on the desk. We'll be back in a week's time. My world, and it's not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn till you can say 